In this tutorial, we will simulate a hybrid VPN connection from a customer's on-premise data center to the AWS cloud. Our customer has a data center in Mumbai and will be connecting to their AWS server in the Northern Virginia region. We will be using OpenSwan as the customer's VPN gateway. We are now in the AWS console northern region where we create our VPC that represents our AWS cloud environment. Click create VPC and then we'll give it a name. And let's give it a CIDR of 10.1.0.0 slash 16. Then click create close. Next we'll create a public subnet. You can give the subnet a name, public subnet. And we'll attach it to our VPC. We'll place this in the US East 1A region. And then we'll give it a CIDR of 10.1.1.0 slash 24. Next we'll create an internet gateway. Just give it a name. And then we'll attach it to our VPC. Okay, now we need to create a route table. Well, actually we have a route, so we just have to create a default route that points to our internet gateway. So click edit routes, add route, and then we'll just create a default route and point to the internet gateway and create. And now we'll associate our subnet, our public subnet with the gateway. And now we can create a virtual private gateway and just give it a name. There's not really much configuration to it right now, just kind of an object um, that will come into play later. Now we attach it to our VPC. And so while it's attaching, great, it's attached. Now we need to go back to our route table and ensure that we enable route propagation. When we enable route propagation, this will make sure that our tunnels can see the prefixes on our on-premise side. And that's it for that side. So now we'll launch an instance this instance is going to be just a regular T2 micro instance that will serve as our test VPN instance or an instance that we're going to use a test VPN connectivity. So nothing special here. We've done this before. We just make sure that it's in our new VPC that we created in the public subnet and then also that we enable the, to get a public IP address. So next add tags and I like to give it a name and then the value of whatever I'm going to call it. I think I'm going to call it test VPN. And now we configure our security group. And so for our security group we're going to make the source of 10.2.0.0/16, which is the other side of our on-prem server, and we're going to enable all TCP, all UDP, and all ICMP. This will ensure that our tunnel will come up without being interrupted. So now we'll look at our configuration, make sure that we like what we see, and then click launch. And then we have to acknowledge that we have the key pair. 
All right, so now we're all set. So now our instance is running. So now we're going to go into the Mumbai side and create the VPC over there. This is actually going to be nearly identical to our other side with the exception of the virtual private gateway. The virtual private gateway will only exist on the AWS side. So I'm going to pause the video so that you don't have to watch all of this stuff again. All right, so now we have to launch a new EC2 instance. Now this one, since we're going to be using OpenSwan, we're going to actually select a larger instance type, a T2 medium. It'll be a little bit more robust to handle the configuration that we need to do. And then for our security group, we'll do it the same as we did for Northern Virginia, with the exception that uh, our source will now be 10.1.0.0/16. It looks good. Click launch. And we have to create a new key pair since this is in a different region. So I created a new key pair. I'm downloading it and launching my instance now. Okay, great. So now we're up and running. And we have to disable the source destination check since we're going to be using this essentially as a firewall. Our tunnel will not come up without us disabling that. So now I'm going to copy the IP address of this instance to the clipboard. I'm going to need that when we go back to the, to the Northern Virginia side. Now we're going to have to create our customer gateway. So I had an old one there. I'm deleting that one. And now I'm creating ours. So we'll give it a name. And then we'll paste in our IP address from the Mumbai instance. And now we create customer gateway. So next we're going to create the site to site VPN connection. So we just hit create VPN connection. Uh, just give it a name. I'll just call it something descriptive like the AWS to Mumbai uh, on or sorry on prem and then test VPN and then we'll go down we'll select our virtual private gateway and then next we'll select our customer gateway and then we're going to do static routing so we'll have to add the prefix that's on our on-prem side so it's 10.2.0.0/16 So that looks good. Then we just create the VPN connection. So this takes a while. So I'm going to pause the video while this takes its time to create. So now our VPN connection is available. Next, we will need to download the VPN configuration to configure our OpenSwan instance. We will select the generic configuration. So I have pulled up the configuration from AWS and a terminal so that we can configure our open SWAN instance. Let's connect to our on-prem server. Ah, I forgot to change permissions on the private key. So let me do that now and then log back into the instances. Next, we will connect this route and then update the instance and install OpenSwan.
Next, let's cat the ipsec.conf file to ensure that the line that contains our include file is uncommented. And as we can see, the line is indeed un uncommented. Now, let's navigate to the ipsec.d directory. We can do an ls to show that there is only one file in the directory. We will need to create two files here as part of the OpenSwan to connect to the AWS end of the connection. First, we'll create a file called connections.conf. The connections.conf file is a template for how we will connect to the AWS side. There are really just two lines that we need to be concerned with. The left ID, which will correspond to our customer gateway IP, and the right, which will correspond to the IP of our VPG. We can simply copy those values from the AWS config and paste them into our conf file. Then once we're done, we just save the file. The next file that we create will be the connections.secrets file. This file follows a specific format where we first need to enter the IP of our CGW, space, then the IP of our VPG, followed by a colon, space, PSK for pre-shared key, and then we paste in our PSK from the AWS config between the quotations. Then we just save the file. Next, we will need to make a system level change to the sysctl file. We will add three lines. One will enable IP forwarding. The other two will disable RP filter and accepting the source route. Then we just save our changes. Now, let's restart the network to propagate our changes. Next, let's start the IPSEC service. Sometimes our tunnels may not come up cleanly. I find it helpful to restart the IPSEC service and then refresh the tunnel details window. Now, we can see that our tunnel is up. So let's do a quick test of the connection to verify that we can send traffic across the tunnel. Let's navigate back to the AWS side of the connection and try to ping the private IP address of our test instance. The pings are successful. Now let's perform a trace route. and we can see that our traffic is indeed going directly over the tunnel. In this video, we were able to simulate a hybrid connection from a customer's on-prem data center to the AWS VPC via VPN. We were also able to verify that traffic was traveling across the tunnel. I hope that you found this video useful and I thank you for watching.